Hi there. I'm John Shields. Welcome to another episode, another class of Farm and Beta Table. Look, we, we actually have our logo up here today. So it's so exciting. Um, so many people watched our last class and I've, I've gotten lots of calls, lots of comments, and they were really excited about hearing all about everything local, everything Maryland, and um, we're back to do it again. Uh, so we were thinking, you know, when it's, it's summertime, yeah, a lot of people say, oh yeah, I love tomatoes, which I love, and I love corn, which I love. But to me, uh, nothing says summertime more than peaches. I just absolutely love peaches. So the title of our class today is, it's a peachy life. We're gonna be doing all kinds of things today. Um, we're first gonna see how a peach comes to life. You know, it uh, grows on a farm and then it's transported to the farmer's market. And then it goes over to a neighborhood bakery and then magically it becomes a Baltimore peach cake. So you're gonna see how that's gonna happen. Um, our guest host, um, Al Meckel, he's the owner and head baker. Uh, at the Fenwick Bakery. He's going to be here and show us and tell us all kinds of stories about the history of that. Um, Mary Hassler and I um, are also going to be cooking all kinds of things with you today. Um, who would have thought? What else could you do? So we're going to do peaches and cherries, put those together and put them in an enchilada in a flour tortilla. Who would have ever thought? Well, this is one of the easiest and nicest um, desserts that I think you will ever have. And then after collectively we've done all this hard work, we're going to make a summertime peachy patch cocktail for you. So it, it's a full thing that, that we have uh, coming up here. Uh, this So if we're going to do peaches, I think the first thing that we needed to do, Mary and I, we got out and we went to the farmer's market. Besides crabs, sweet corn, and Maryland tomatoes, nothing says summertime more than sweet, just-picked peaches. So we journeyed to the famous 32nd Street Farmer's Market in Baltimore to seek out some of that delicious fuzzy fruit. We headed to the Black Rock Orchard stand to find Dave Hockheimer, who along with his wife, Emily Zoss, grows some of the best peaches in the region up in Lineborough, Maryland. Good morning, John. Good morning, Dave. How are you doing? Good. Good. All right, so if people come up to you and say, what kind of peach should I get? What do you tell them? Like, these are Desiree. These are a beautiful yellow right, peach. Go. They are soft and ready to eat. They have more flavor than the white peaches. The white peaches I have today are spring snow, and they're a firm peach, and they're sweet, sweet, sweet. And these peaches have a little sweet, a little tart, and it's a much more flavor. Awesome. All right, well, I'm going to Fenwick Baker. Do you have any pieces I might want to take to that? He, he would probably love a basket of peaches. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you would. <laughs> All right, Dave, thanks. All right, thank you, John. See ya. Have a good weekend. All right, well, it's time for me to introduce my co-chef and partner in crime here for our uh, cooking series, um, executive sous chef, who also lights as the CEO of the Harford County Public Library, Mary Hassel. Mary! John, it's so great to it's be here. It's good to see you again. Oh Welcome back to the kitchen. I love it. And look at all these luscious peaches. I know. We got I'm a lot super going excited on. about this. We have a lot going on today, don't we? Do I, we not? I think we do. We We're going to be so tired at the end of this. It's going to be worth every delicious moment. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is indeed. So one of the I thought that we should do first is thank um, some of our um, people that have helped make this all possible. Obviously, the Harford County Public Library, who does everything to bring this to life. And then the Maryland Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. uh, their uh, Maryland's Best Program and Maryland's Best Seafood Program, both amazing, you know, amazing resources for everybody around the Bay. And then we'd also like to thank Black Rock Orchard, who helped us with peaches. We need peaches to do this show. And to the Fenwick Bakery, the legendary Fenwick Bakery in Parkville and <laughs> that we hold so near and dear to our hearts. 
And I think that was one of the first things we thought about when we thought we're about doing a peachy life. I think it was. It was one of the first ones that came to our mind because we have a very long history with Benwick Bakery. Yeah. And the peach cake is just phenomenal. It is, as my kids would say, it is epic. <laughs> and you know, when somebody says something is epic, you just have to explore and learn more about it. But thank you to all our sponsors and to our partners. And of course, you can go to the library look these folks up yeah. and get more information on them because we support everybody throughout the state of Maryland when it comes to our ag, our peaches, our seafood, you name it. Yeah. And yeah. you do a great job with that. And you so really do you, do. because you're, you're, you're a celebrity. Ah. <laughs> so anyway, um, again, growing up, you know, growing up in Parkville, yeah. we spent, at least I spent a lot of time at the um, Fenwick Bakery and so for me to actually be able to do a class about the Fenwick Bakery is like so cool. I so agree. I after, agree. <laughs> after we ding batted around the farmer's market, and we had a really good time ding batting around the farmer's market, did we not? We did. We did. But then we got in the car and off we went <laughs> to the Fenwick Bakery. Northeast in search of peach cake. Mary Hassler and I spent most of our formative years growing up in beautiful Parkville, Maryland. Parkville is home to the legendary Benwick Bakery on Harford Road, where owner and head baker Al Meckel, along with his talented crew, prepare an iconic Baltimore peach cake that keeps folks lined up all summer just to get their own slab of this delicious summertime treat. And while you're at it, a pie or two wouldn't hurt. Well, you know, Again, when we're talking about Fenwick Bakery and when I'm talking about growing up and going there, I would always see all that activity back there in the, in, in, in the kitchen and where everybody was baking and just the aromas and you were waiting in line. And to think that we actually have Al Meckel here, who is the owner and head baker. Now, you know, you people who are like music fans and they would say, Mick Jagger was going to come over and do the class with you. You'd be like out of your mind. Well, this is kind of my baker, Mick Jagger. And so I'm so excited that we actually have him coming here to be with us today to talk peach cake. I totally agree. This is like very exciting. I mean, really exciting. And see the behind the scenes, how the peach cake's made and just it's incredible. It's an incredible and it's a work of art. All right. Well, without further ado, <laughs> we would like to bring to you Al Meckel. Now, come hey, on out now. here. Now, hey, we'll, we'll, put you right, you? we'll put you right in the middle. Yep. Appreciate so that. You, that you can help us and tell us what uh, everything is going on. So Fenwick Bakery, tell us a little bit about Fenwick Bakery, uh, the history and how you got to be where you are. Well, it's been around since 1913, uh, started by Ernst Ubersax. Uh, around 1956, his son, Walter Ubersax, took over along with his brother, Ed Ubersax, and his sister, Marta. And I started working there in 1979 or so. Uh, and at that point, I didn't envision I was going to make it a life work, but huh. that's pretty much how it ended up. Wow, that's amazing. So what are some of the favorites? I mean, obviously, summertime. How, how long do you do, run the peach cake? What's its season? Peach cake generally starts the uh, first week of July uh -huh. and keeps going as long as we can get peaches. Typically, uh, peaches start running out about, you know, first week of September. Yeah. I managed to stock up on enough that it hangs around for another week or two. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, because people want it. I mean, they're yeah. in line. Every time I, I go there, there's always a line to get the peach cake. So and I'm happy with that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's the idea. You know, you're going to, you're going to have a bakery, you're going to have a business. I think it's really, really important to get the people to come in there. So anyway, we'll talk about a number of different things, but, um, Obviously, what we're going to do today, the, the recipe that we're going to do today is a peach cake, a Baltimore style peach cake recipe. I got this um, years ago from the Baltimore Sun. 
you oh, know no they, you know where you could yeah. trip recipes yeah. people would write mm-hmm. in and get the thing and so we you know i've just used it off and on you know all those years mm-hmm. and it's not the, it's not the real thing but yes. It works, you know, in a right. pinch, it actually actually works. But you can do it at home. You can. And any of us, even myself, could do this, right? Yes. yes. Even though you're, I could walk down the Fenwick Bakery from my mom's house. So I'll hey. show you some dough. Oh, okay. <laughs> dough. I like it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have some official Fenwick Bakery dough today. Mm-hmm. But just in case we didn't, because Al can't come to everybody's house all the time. Really? So no, he's coming in. I know it's really he did really start good. working at the bakery. What was he? 10? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 10, 10 18, sure. yeah. 18. 18. 18 okay. years old, and <laughs> time goes really quickly, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm waiting for my granddaughter to start. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll see how that We'll see how out. that works. Yeah, I've been trying to get some of mine into the, into <laughs> the uh, restaurant She may not business. be as happy with the idea. <laughs> so, yeah. Al, is there a peach, you know, when you, when you uh, slice a peach or you want to mm-hmm. take the stone fruit out of it, is there like a contest that you enter? And would you win that contest? Because I oh, saw be you do it at, at the bakery. It, yeah. 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 Okay. Had some practice. Yeah, you have had practice. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll show. We'll show the. We'll show you how that may be done, <laughs> but, <laughs> as it is. So let let's talk about. So basically, we're just going to make a yeasted, mm-hmm. um, enrich, enriched dough. So enriched means it has butter in it, mm-hmm. uh, and it has some eggs in it. And that that's sure. kind of the general thing. This is an interesting. Um, actually, this is a pretty interesting uh, recipe because it takes, you know, uh, just some bread flour Mm -hmm. and then some sugar uh, to sweeten. It's about a half a Mm -hmm. cup of that and um, a little bit of salt. I like your prep glasses that you use. That's very 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 nice. nice. And so anyway, so that just really is just put together kind of like that, just put together. And then this is the weird part because I'm not used to this. Mm -hmm. Um, This is yeast. Um, the, you know, you can get the little packets of yeast. You can mm-hmm. get the rapid, yeah, rising re- yeast or the slow yep. acting. So tell tell us a little bit about your experience with yeast and what kind you use. When well, I spend it. most of my time keeping yeast happy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and they want like a specific temperature range, and they want a certain pH level. And, yeah. Uh, in this case, it looks like you've got a dry yeast there. Yes, this is a dry yeah. yeast. I tend to use what's called compressed yeast, wet yeast. The cakes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, actually, it's more of a block. <laughs> yeah. So most people, if they were going out like everybody at home, they probably are more than likely going to be ended up with this. Do you think? Yeah, because it's easily available at the grocery yeah, store, you can get and it's got a good shelf life too. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, I work with yeast at the restaurant, and you know, we make breads and so mm-hmm. forth, and we're always, you know, proofing the yeast, mm-hmm. and you know, but this recipe, you just put it in. Mm-hmm. And I highly recommend the little packages. If you're like me and you only bake tour at, around the holidays and you make like Christmas Stalin and things like that, that rapid rise yeast is amazing for us, for us uh, amateurs, so to speak. <laughs> First humans. <laughs> so then um, it just has a little bit of softened butter. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's not much of anything else in there but that. So if you, um, obviously, you know, it, you have like the biggest mixer that I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. It's like massive. It's a tower. How, yeah. how much dough can you mix in there? Um, our typical batch of sweet dough would be about 175 pounds or so. Oh my God. <laughs> Hundred, I can't, I can't even, so I can't we'll even make, imagine. We'll make that uh, this time of year about every day. Every really? day. Wow. Oh, that's unbelievable. So how does your flour come to the store? It can't come in those little bags that we uh, get. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, size, that yeah. would be like all piled up. Yeah, it's 50 pound bags. It used to be hundred pound bags, but there's a lot more women involved in uh, baking now commercially. Yeah. So they're not as comfortable lifting a hundred gotcha. pound bag. <laughs> Yeah, I would. I would like the smaller bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all. That's always nice. Maybe you can work that a little bit. I'm going to get some hot water here. It just okay. needs real hot water. That's what the that's what the um, recipe calls for. Now, John, you're using a wooden spoon. Is there a reason, or was that just your choice when you're it's making my, this? It's my choice because okay. it's old fashioned. I like and, it. Too. You know, when my grandmother would be making doughs or things, she didn't have a KitchenAid. Um, she would just have a kind of an enamel bowl, um, wooden spoon, mm-hmm. and she'd go to town. And that was that nice. was pretty much it. I have a KitchenAid. They're employees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a oh, wow. it, it's a helpful thing, uh, is yeah. it not? Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to take 
um, and just pour some beaten eggs into that as well. Do that and I would call that a lightly beaten egg as yes. opposed to putting it in a mix or something and making it all frothy. Right, no, right? it's just lightly beaten. Yep. And again, it's all part of this kind of an enriched dough. Um, I think Al can tell us a little bit more. And I, actually he, when we, when we were at Fenwick and we were talking about peach cake, he was telling me that the tradition actually came from the German bakers yeah. um, from like, the, they came here like in the 1800s. Right. Yeah. And, uh, they would come in and, uh, well, they were making a product called a plum cake, yeah. which was similar to peach cake. And that there was a stone fruit that they pitted and they put halves on a sweet dough rather than quartering like I do with peach cake. Right. But, uh, since Baltimore is a hub, railroad hub, there were a lot of peaches coming down from the uh, orchards in Pennsylvania. So oh, the German okay. bakers would see a nice fruit coming down and figured this is what we could do with it. Yeah, nice. and, well, it worked, didn't it? Yeah, it's a tradition. Now, have we always referred to peaches and plums as stone fruit? To me, that was a relatively new term in the last 20 years to me. We never, we just said they had pits when I was yeah, growing up. Yeah, they had up. pits. I they mean, had we, pits. We, we, we weren't so specific okay. on that. But you know, once we started watching food television um, <laughs> and reading Cook's Illustrated. Uh -huh. we, we have all kinds of terms we never had. We just said it had pit in it. Yeah, wait yep. A bit. yep. That's all it had is it had a pit Stone in fruit there. sounds classy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Sound. Adds adds class. Yeah, make sure you get the pits out of there. Yeah, yeah. yeah you do want to get some of the pits out of there. And all honesty, I haven't stirred this much in my entire career. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, so and and there mixers. you go. Keep stirring we have, we have mixers. Fill those muscles up. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. There you go. It's like doing a hollandaise, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you just keep mixing and mixing, mixing and mixing and mixing, mixing. And, mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing and mixing. No, it's the right uh, consistency. It's no holiday for me. No, 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 no holiday you do. It's coming together nice. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. So that's, that's the idea. So, um, we and if can, Al can stir it, you can stir it at home. If Al can do this live. <laughs> Without his big go. equipment. Okay. Awesome. So here, we can just oh, show yeah. him what it's, happened. Yeah. So really, in the matter of minutes, um, a yeast of dough was made. Uh, the idea is you don't want it to be too firm. It still has, it's a little bit sticky. You can kind of see how that looks there. And normally, you know, you have to let a dough rise and then you push it back down and then it goes back up. None of this, none of this right now. So basically uh, what we would be doing is getting a sheet pan out, taking the dough, and either flattening it out, mm -hmm. rolling mm -hmm. it out. You have some of the coolest rollers that I've yeah. ever seen. They were really, you, you, you may have just, we just ran some uh, tape that yeah. we saw that the, the They rollers. really padded the core. I was impressed. Yeah. They really took their time and you could tell they have done it a few times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, they were experts. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so then it just gets padded into the pan and then we'll do the next part now of putting all the peaches okay. and the seasonings in. So we hand that off and yeah. then we have the magic of TV. A little pan here. <laughs> here we go. See? Look like. at that. Look at that. This That's is what a, yours this will is look like. This is official Fenwick bakery mm -hmm. dough. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. really good. Uh -huh. Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. An aluminum pan came from Fenwick bakery. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the whole thing. We got the whole, the whole enchilada. So um, here we go. Now we have, you, you were talking a little bit about uh, when you, uh, Put the topping you you use brown sugar do you yeah, not? It's brown sugar or some other uh, ingredients to it right right mm -hmm. so the the recipe here was um from the sun paper was <laughs> a half a cup of regular uh, so i put a little less in there and for the one that i made earlier i put in some brown sugar as well and mix mm -hmm. the white and the brown sugar and it's a really good thing it gives it a really beautiful color i think so I liked your suggestion, and I incorporated that into the um, okay. to the Baltimore Sun recipe. And are the other ingredients secret? Um, they're commercially available. Okay. Uh, added there's one of just lemon flavoring. Okay, you and don't have to tell a, the secret. And some flour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. It's so right. really not a secret. Okay. So we have that. All right. So this is basically going to go on top of the peaches once the peaches are in. So I never understood what the peach cake thing meant when people would be talking about it. I thought, what well, do you make a dough and you throw the peaches in and you mix it all around? No, mm -hmm. not quite. You have a, a beautiful uh, enriched dough. And then Al, I don't know if 
I don't know how these peaches feel to you. Pretty um, good. Yeah. Do you think nice. they're, uh, you could uh, show one of your demos? Let's see how it works. Yeah. Okay. Now watch carefully. This is the real This gene. is the really. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they it worked. Out. Came off. Uh -huh. it did. And just trim it a little bit. And... Wow. We always quarter. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, when you get the bigger peaches later on in the year, it's going to be more like eighth of it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They get some really monsters. And okay. just uh, Put them sit on there. And he cut sure the butt get... and the stem off a little bit. Mm -hmm. My boss always told me it kept the peach from curling up. Cool. It may be. These are nice, juicy peaches. They are. they are nice peaches. Are these some of Black Rocks? Yeah, I had gotten these earlier, earlier, like, um, yeah, over a week ago, actually, I got these. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Black Rock was at the market where we stopped by, along with so many other vendors. What an amazing, totally go and support your farmer's markets. Yeah. Um, they have so many great products and produce. Yeah, we had a great time. We down did there. have a good time. I mean, there was everything. Oh, yes. Everything down there. <laughs> yeah. And that was stayed at Black Rock, was it? Yeah. Okay, thought so. I remember talking to them last year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Black Rock Orchard is up in Lineboro, uh, Maryland, which is right on the Maryland Pennsylvania line. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave and his wife, Emily, have had the farm for um, the orchard for years and years now. And they do some of the most beautiful stone fruit and um, apples. The apples are incredible. And um, I see another show. Yeah, apple. Yeah. apple. We got our apple pie. show. Apple Good idea. <laughs> yeah, Emily makes this amazing slab apple pie that I could die for. It is just so, so good. so good. Now, let me ask you something. I always get this mm -hmm. question when my grandchildren are around. They see me working with the peaches or any stone fruit. Grandma, can we plant the seed in the yard and will we get a peach tree out of it? Oh. What do you all think? Probably so, eventually. Wow, okay. I yes. know we had a peach tree in my backyard until a windstorm took it down. Uh -huh. And then it ended up in my neighbor's yard. <laughs> <laughs> they were the recipients of that yeah, bounty. He was fall. kind enough to inform me how the tree had fallen over. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks beautiful. Yeah. So they're lined up. You can tell you've done this before. Yeah. You've got them lined up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you left the skins on too. That's very important too. You left right. the, the peel yeah. or the I've skin. I've heard other people who uh, take the skins off, but. Well, that's quite a chore. Yeah, that is quite yeah, a chore. Yeah, it would be a chore. Peeling a peach is not always that easy, you know, mm -hmm. depending on how ripe or not ripe it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, boiling water, maybe? Sometimes, yeah, you have to put it into uh, boiling water just yeah. very quickly, skins blanch bit. it, mm -hmm. put it into ice water, and then there you go. All right, so we have the peaches. The peaches are on the dough, as you can see. And then we have a um, little mixture of uh, sugar. We have regular sugar and brown sugar and cinnamon in this. So mm -hmm. how would you do that? Uh, me? Yeah. If you were going to do it. If it, it does, and it's not a Fenwick. Yeah. <laughs> well, I typically have gloves and just. Yeah, that's how I do it. Yeah, that's how I do it too. That's how I typically yeah. do mm -hmm. it too. And you're more than welcome to use your hands. Okay, good. <laughs> you're that's more, than, really you're more than welcome okay. to use your hands. There you go. That's how I do it. That's how I do it too. Yeah. That's how you make sure you get the right amount on each peach. Yeah, I mm -hmm. tell the kids who are working for me, broadcasting, not this. Yeah, 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 exactly. So then Mary has our uh, official crab. Um, you have the yep. crab towel. Crab towel. Oh, okay, yes, so indeed. what happens at this point is, according to our, our recipe, okay. is we just take a little towel and put it over top of it. And then it's going to sit for about an hour while the dough rises a little bit. And then we're going to put it into an oven and it's going to bake uh, about 25, 30 minutes. And we theoretically should have a Baltimore style peach cake. All right, into All right, the oven see, it goes. Let's see what we got going on here. Let's see what's what here. <gasps> All right. Look at the magic. It's <laughs> so beautiful. here, this is the act. This actually is the recipe from I think this came from like the 1950s from the Baltimore Sun. I love it. And so it's just a, it's an old fashioned sweet, kind of sweet bread, um, sweet dough peach cake. So afterwards. Okay, there you go. Uh -huh. Generally, 
Uh, again, the recipe calls for using kind of like a apricot glaze, but I found an apricot um, preserve mm -hmm. and just put a little tiny bit of water in there and heated it, you know, nice. just so that you can actually spread some stuff on top of it. Um, Mo, a lot of the, tell us the, the history about all those uh, bakeries that put the red food coloring in this glaze. You know, why did they do that? How did that happen? In all honesty, I don't know. Okay. What? <laughs> I do know that uh, uh, some local bakeries will use, uh, just use some preserves, uh, but typically it's more like raspberry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they use a little bit of raspberry? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so it, it, it was interesting. All the different recipes that I've, that I've researched over the years, for some reason, they always had the, the food coloring in it. So one year we were doing it as a special at Gertrude's, and we um, basically just got some beet juice and yeah. put that in there. And you don't taste the beet, right. but you're not using the red food coloring in it. So it, it worked out pretty well. We, we I, kinda... guess, I guess the red coloring goes well with the peaches. A yeah. lot of peaches have sort of a red center to them as well. Yeah, I, I think that that's what they were trying to accentuate. Yeah. You know, that, that red peachy kind of uh, feel. Mm -hmm. So there we go. So this is, and this, this is almost like a breakfast bread too. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is besides a peach cake. It, mm -hmm. it reminds me of like a, um, a, a like a coffee cake, coffee kind peaches. of thing, a risen coffee cake or something like that. I've had this like in, in uh, France before and in Germany. The breakfast bread. Uh, yeah, well, we use our sweet dough for round buns, you know, yeah. uh, cinnamon mm -hmm. rolls and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, I guess that the, the, the only other thing that you do then is you can just cut it. And I liked, um, I liked when I was down your bacon. <laughs> the measuring. He, he had a, you, you have, what are they, like measuring sticks? No, they're already... not prior sticks, you know, for flipping up and down. They're oh. great because, yeah. you know, sometimes in the restaurant we have issues, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that everything is just even. And so I said to them, this is how they do it at the Fenwick Bakery. And this is what <laughs> we're going to do. So uh, you actually transformed the whole restaurant. It was pretty- Portion control. It's portion. And it was exact. It was amazing and the way it, they would cut and it. And it is. And, you know, the other thing is, you know, when people are getting things, they want it to be consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, consistency is really important. Yeah. And if you got one little piece of peach cake that, that was that big and then another one was that big, the other people are not going to be happy. Yeah. Trust me. And they will know. Trust me, we're in Baltimore. They will know. We will compare that. <laughs> um, do we have some little, a little plates, little glass plates? Yes. We do. We do. Look we at do. that. Look at there that. We go. The magic of glass plates. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let's see if we get this out of here without me cutting my finger again. Please don't. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. There we go. Come on. Come on. Oh, there we go. A lot, what happened is this is a very shallow pan. Mm -hmm. Usually I would use like about a two, two inch right. high. And this is just like a one inch. And so all the peach juice kind of drizzled over, went under and caramelized and actually that might sound not so good, but it actually is, is pretty oh good too. Gosh. Here you go. It's oh, really good. Mm, yeah. Look at this. This is beautiful. Here you, Here you go. So anyway, this is not Fenwick Bakery, but <laughs> it is a Baltimore style peach mm. cake. So you can try it in the, the privacy of your own home. Mm -hmm. And um, then the rest of the time, just get on Harford Road and get down <laughs> to the Fenwick Bakery. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Mm, the caramelizing is excellent. Yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway, while we chew, <laughs> we're going to get rid of most of this stuff because you know what we're going to do? We're going to kind of do a locavore south of the border, cherry and peach enchilada. Oh my gosh. Who would have thought, right? All right. Here, we'll hand this off to, uh, uh, to, to the magic people that the live behind people. the curtain there. We love those people here. I can take that and get rid of mm -hmm. this. And we're just going to do. Okay. So maybe, um, Al, you can uh, tell Mary some more stories about, about the bakeries, the legendary bakeries of Baltimore. Well, there's still a few of us around, of course, mm -hmm. us. Uh, Woodley, Holmes, and Simon's Bakery. We're all okay. known for uh, various things. Peach cake, mm -hmm. of course. And right. everybody has their own little uh, specialty. 
I trust mm -hmm. people mention marshmallow donuts and donuts. Oh, and marshmallow donuts. Okay. Yes. My neighbors also make sure you get marshmallow. No, it's the uh, uh, donuts and then get your chocolate sauce, which evidently you're renowned for. Oh, the chocolate icing? Yes, chocolate oh, yeah. icing. Oh, yeah. That's sure renowned good. for yeah. it. Everybody Every, wants those oh, donuts yes. with that chi chocolate icing. Oh, yes. Yeah. And don't they ask for that? at the? And you do that mm -hmm. like at the last minute or something? Well, Somebody we, was telling me about this. Now we ice up the donuts uh, you know, pretty frequently and uh, you know, have them on hand. And But if somebody wants some additional icing on there, it's really not that much of a chore to add some icing to it. And they will, all you have to do is ask. And it, on anything you buy there, they'll put the icing on, I heard. Uh, they might raise their eyebrows a little bit, but hey, yeah. they'll do it if you ask. And it's, it's so good. And I think, <laughs> I, I remember one year, I was at Baltimore Sun, they, they were asking people, supposedly, you know, who uh, were noteworthy mm -hmm. in town, what would be kind of my last um, uh, meal? Okay. And I said, I want a chocolate eclair from the Fenwick Bakery. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I Appreciate can see that. that. Definitely uh -huh. see that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's let's get ready for the. Okay. Do we have all of our stuff here, ladies and gentlemen? I for, believe we do. For our little enchilada. Okay. Mm, this looks great. I love angeladas. I've never okay. had a peach cherry one before. So this is a this is a two step thing. Okay. That we have here. So we have our peaches. peaches. We have our cherries. cherries. And then we have all the things that we're going to need to Ooh. make our sauce. Okay. Ah. Oh. That's part of the sauce mm, here. That looks good. Looks and dense. Then here I like we have it. more saucy mm -hmm. stuff here. <laughs> more sauce. So oh, big bottle of rum. I think. <laughs> um, oh, and we do oh, have rum. Oh, oh, we got oh. a little rum here. Life is good. <laughs> Life is good. Rum, rum, a little rum around the holidays. Okay. So, okay. Oops, oh. there we are. Lost the ruler. Um, so what we're going to do, and Mary, you can do uh, some of this Absolutely. because you're over in that department. Okay. So first thing first is we're going to make this, it's, it's kind of like a brown sugar caramel sauce mm -hmm. that will top uh, the peach and mm -hmm. cherry and chavadas. So all you need mm -hmm. to do there is take that butter. Put, the whole thing? Yeah, the Ooh. whole thing. So you might want to show. Oh, that's, <laughs> a, that's, our, that's our famous, that's our famous whisk. I felt like I was in, I was in my kitchen. <laughs> that's, that's the magic Oops. whisk. <laughs> okay, let me. Uh, you might just keep okay. that in there. I got it. Don't, don't let that out of that pool. Okay. <laughs> I felt like I was in my house. <laughs> <laughs> all right there okay. is that enough butter mary that's that's all i want to know. sure is that, that is butter? plenty of butter you feel like that mm -hmm. you feel I good do. about that okay okay let's get this here we got the single one here mm -hmm. i'm going to get this thing running okay all right there you go all right so mary has just put some softened butter into the pot mm -hmm. with her magic whisk and then we're going to take a about a half a cup of honey oh is this a half a cup it is okay we had it carefully, scientifically measured Thank you. It's um, ahead of time. And then uh, we're going to have in there as well some brown sugar. Brown sugar, that's here. Mm -hmm. See, brown sugar. Is this also from this the is sun like paper? Brown sugar. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah. No, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't get this one from the sun paper. This okay. is actually from the New Chesapeake Kitchen. Ooh. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. And the library has those books, but I really recommend you buy your own. Anyway, okay. just thought, okay. What? We now it. Whatever way you get them is, is important. <laughs> so true. And then we're going to put in um, some heavy cream. Mm, can't go wrong. With you that. can tell this is a light dish. Um, I good. said it was easy. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's all I said. It was easy. Uh, and then we have. Uh, let me see. I think this is going to be to do the other thing here. Oh, look at this! Yeah. It's lovely. It's lovely. You got your heavy Oops. cream. <laughs> All right, Mary, I'm gonna I'm hauling out the heavy equipment. You know, <laughs> Hell with it. Oh, thanks, honey. Let's That's go, better. let's okay, go, like let's it. go wild. Let's okay. go wild. We're gonna use the restaurant. Right. Ooh, style. Look at this. It's a restaurant. There one. you go. Okay. No worries, right? So you got all that going there. And then we actually have some made in Maryland hooch. This is a uh, lion, um, lion rum from St. Michael's. This is their, nice. their dark rum. Oh, it's lovely. Lovely. And so, Mary, we want to put exactly one quarter of a cup. All there. right. One quarter. Exactly. And that was light brown sugar you put in here, but I guess you could use dark. You, you could wish. use dark brown sugar. Okay. Absolutely. 
So now the idea here with this um, sauce that we have going on here, mm -hmm. Mary is going to bring that to a boil, mm -hmm. a nice roaring boil. And then we're going to let it cook for about five minutes mm -hmm. until, you know, it starts to get a little caramelized looking. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not that's not hard to do, is it? No, no. no. Drink this right no, now. For me, it's very easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, making caramel sauces are is is not that terribly difficult. Usually, you know, you're using like white sugar and a little bit of water, um, and you're cooking it down until it, it's almost like it's it's starting to burn, and mm. you get to that that fine line between. Is it going to go too far or, or not? We're we going to do it. Mm. And just as it starts to um, turn a nice dark brown, if you want to enrich it, you can pull it off the stove and pour in a little bit of hot, heavy cream. It'll Ooh. foam all up, but it'll give you a really creamy caramel sauce. Nice. So this is a kind of a similar thing that you're doing, okay. except that we're not making the original caramel part. That brown sugar is the thing that's going to do okay. that. Well, it looks delightful. All right, well, we'll let that do what it needs to do. Okay. And we'll, we'll try to get into what we're supposed to do here, right? So mm. um, the other part that we have to do is we have to have some peaches, okay. which we do already. We have some lovely peaches. And now we got to get busy on the cherries. Yes. Okay, so here we have some. And I know Al, you know, he. You, what kind of cherry um, dishes do you do? Um, um, Mostly pies, uh, cobblers. Yes. And, and do you use fresh cherries when you make them? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. <laughs> okay. Actually, he does most of the time. And so he's probably pitted 4 million and 22 <laughs> cherries, I think, in his lifetime. So oh, uh, we'll, we'll let you do the, uh, the initial cherry pit. Okay. Look oh. at that. Look at that. <laughs> How did it work? <laughs> it worked. Did it? Yeah. Oh, came right out. Oh, okay. awesome. There you go. Good job, Al. I missed it. <laughs> who would have again? Who would have thought? So you could just keep hitting cherries. Now, fortunately, for uh, those of you at home, um, some of the kind people at Gertrude's helped us today, and they pitted quite a number of cherries. Um, you can get these handy dandy cherry pitters at any kind of local uh, uh, cooking store. They also make them um, at this big box. And you can put multiple cherries in them Ooh. and you can push down on it and it'll pit like four or six cherries at the wow. same time. I like that. We idea. don't have Me that too. luxury right here today. Um, You're doing a great job, Al. But okay. Al's doing a phenomenal yes. job with these and cherries. And these cherries look really good. Okay, yeah. these cherries here, and I want you to look at these cherries and have a cherry. Thank you. I love cherries. Well, I have certainly. a cherry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these cherries also them. are from <laughs> Black Rock Orchard. Uh, yeah, they're really good. They're really, really good. Mm. Because they look like they have the Rainier cherries and then the black cherries. Mm -hmm. Sweet, very good. All right. This Big is a, this is a hard job we have. Here. Okay, we're starting to boil. We're eating peach and, cake, and we're and... starting to boil. Oh, it's beautiful! You should see Mary's thing. Starting to boil. Uh huh. <laughs> Just saying. See, see how that does? Yeah. All right, mm. this is good. So we're gonna let that boil for just a few minutes. Okay. And then we'll turn it down a little bit and let it go, I don't know, for another two or three minutes or, until we get our enchiladas made. Okay. I mean, we can only do so many things, you know. Okay. Whoa. Look I feel that. like a witch standing here stirring uh, a cauldron. It's awesome. I know, I know. <laughs> but it's looking good. Being all Shakespearean. Yes, I am. And you can see it's it's starting it to is, thicken. Yeah. So I, I think we could probably just turn take this little thing mm -hmm. down to a simmer. Okay. and let that go okay all right now so some of the things that we've just done is we have sliced peaches mm -hmm. we have pitted cherries and we have some additional pitted cherries so basically all you would do at this point is either cut it the cherry in half or you could do it in quarters you know depending on how you're feeling that day um i think i'm going to love this recipe yeah, it, it really is good. Now, for those of you who don't want to go through quite everything that we went through, um, you could also, especially for the cherries, if it was out of season, um, 
frozen cherries. You can sometimes get the pitted frozen cherries mm -hmm. and they will work quite nicely in this recipe as well. But since we are right in the summer, and we have access to some of the best peaches, best cherries, best apricots, best plums, best everything you can imagine. We're gonna use what's in season, right? Yes. And if you wanna know what's in season, a great place to go is to Maryland's Best website. Um, uh, it's marylandsbest.net and it tells you about local farmers markets. It tells you about all kinds of things. So keep that in mind. It's a all great right. resource. It's a great Statewide. resource. So I'm gonna take the cherries and the peaches and kind of put all these guys together here. And then I'm gonna take some sugar, put that all over there and a little bit of cinnamon as well. Oh, cinnamon's good. And you can do this a, a bit, uh, you can do this about, I don't know, half an hour or even more if you like ahead of time. Uh, because it's basically like the same thing that you're doing if you put sugar over strawberries ahead of time. That's called macerating. Is that what it's called? Yeah, you're macerating the fruit. And that's a really technical term for meaning tossing in sugar. <laughs> and the idea of doing it ahead of time, you know, the grainy part of the sugar mm -hmm. will dissipate. And it actually makes a little syrup and a little juice because it pulls out some of the juice from the fruit. Nice. So macerating is a good thing. And we may have t-shirts to that effect later <laughs> this season. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Caramel's All right. looking great. Yeah, caramel's looking good. All right, now it's time to do the assembly. Okay. All right. This is kind of the arts and crafts part of the entire thing. All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen over there. Oh, my skirt's falling down here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. Great, right, we got that. Go. Ooh, the buttered pan. Mm -hmm. And we have a generously, since we put so much ah. butter in the sauce, we generously also buttered the. Um, yes. That there, we can hand that off those cherries off there. Okay. 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 And what we have here are some delicious flour tortillas. You can get these just about any Amen. grocer now. Mm -hmm. I said, but how many do we have? We have one, two, three, four here. Well, we'll do, we'll do four of those. Put this out of, out of the way. All right, so let's talk about these. So you could, some people may say, could we use a corn tortilla? You can. Um, the only thing to remember about it, it does not have the same elasticity as the flour one. Right. Um, you, but then you could have a gluten-free um, Choice. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that is something that you do. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of water um, and on both sides of the tortilla, just moisten it. And what does that do? Um, generally, what you'll find is when you're baking it okay. um, without doing that, it dries out. Okay. They get too crispy and you really don't want that. And what I would do if I was using the corn tortilla is use even more water to okay. try to make that so it can, Softer. It can be soft and okay. it can fold over better. So the idea with this at, then is we're really just taking a, a beautiful kind of mound of, of the um, fruit and putting it right down mm -hmm. the center. Can everybody see that? Right down the mm -hmm. center of the, the tortilla. And then essentially, you're just gonna take your fingers and push the fruit in and kind of roll like okay. so. And seam down. And right? then you want to put your, the seam down. Okay. So that works. That's wow. the only thing you have to remember seam down. Um, so just a little bit more of that. And this. Al, if you want to do yep. one, that would be lovely. Sure. While you're doing that one, I'll, I'll moisten the other thing here. Okay. <laughs> that, it looks beautiful. It actually looks healthy until we put the rum in the front. Well, yeah, top. but hey, it starts off good. really good. <laughs> it does. And, uh, and then from there it goes. Now, you know, I mean, there are quite a number of other kind of caramel recipes that you can do that don't involve all that butter or all that um, sugar. You know, it could, it could kick it, it down could. a notch. But, you know, we're having a good time to, tonight. If you notice, 
we didn't really eat much of anything that was <laughs> substantial except dessert. This is really the focus <laughs> of this is having summertime fun uh, with dessert, with peaches. and This would make a really great party menu, in my opinion. Yeah. It, it just would. And, and as you'll see, you can make this in advance. Um, we're going to bake this off. It'll have all the caramel sauce on top of it. And then, so if you were having people over, you can make multiple trays of this to set it aside. And just before they come, mm -hmm. pop it in the oven for 10 minutes or so just to reheat. And it's, it's oh, phenomenal. Good. All right, we'll do one more. And then we'll get these things moving. Like so. All righty. There we go. Grab those if you want to grab some more of that. Looks beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the colors, it's just a nice presentation to it. Yeah, well, I was. And we um, haven't even finished it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, so many times, you know, I love to do uh, um, crepe and mm. put fresh fruit into the crepe and mm -hmm. everything. And we were in the kitchen and we were doing a, a special menu and we were using flour tortillas. And I thought, that could work as a crepe. And I bet you we could turn this whole thing into a tortilla and God knows we did. Yeah. All right, so get rid of the water here and this here and that there. All right, Mary, I think, yes, you're, I think you're up next. Okay, now what am I doing? Just so you it? are going to Don't pour, pour that. I'll, I'll move them a little bit, give them a little bit of room there okay. so that they'll get some of this. So you can just take that and just kind of Enjoy yourself. Just pour it Hope all over <laughs> it. You know, just try to pour a little bit yeah, on each one, up and down each one of them. I like so, your pan. This is a Kaflon. That's a Kaflon, yeah. Kaflon, in case anybody wants to know what, what pan I'm using. It's very It's cool. nice. It's a very nice very pan. Cool. Oh, this is just decadent. Looks good. It smells Doesn't it? really good, yeah. too. Now, you can never overdo putting too much sauce on things, right? No, this is... In my opinion. No. Now we're getting to the whole where the butter well, is. Well, also, okay. it might look like it's a lot of sauce, but as oh, no. it bakes, it goes down this somewhat. This is beautiful. And then you want the sauce so you can put it over top. Oh, um, yeah, the, definitely. Um, and so I think, Mary, right behind you there okay. is some aluminum foil. If aluminum not, foil right, right here. There. Okay. Are we covering the whole pan? Yep, we'll cover the whole pan. Push this over to here. Mm -hmm. Take some of these over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take these. There we go. Put that over there. Get rid of all these things. Clear our stage a little bit. Clear our stage. Put that over there. Wipe this up. Mm -hmm. Give my tool the key break over. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so here. We're going to put this into the Jersey oven, right, right into oven. the Jersey oven. It's the magic. And then oven. we have, ta da da da. Okay. All righty. Here we are. Look at that. So there, our little, they kind of shrink a bit as mm -hmm. they as they bake. Mm -hmm. And let's see, we have a few plates for this one too, I believe, that, that Jersey got together for us. Thank you, Jersey. Okay. Oh, these are pretty. Oh my gosh, it looks beautiful. Here. All righty. Now I'll let you do the honors. And then we even have a little bit of this for the sauce. Wow. Okay? And I'm going to grab something special here. Oh, what is that? Uh -huh. I know what that uh, is. Brooms Bloom. Oh my gosh. I love their ice cream. Up in Harford County. Kate would be so pleased. I know. And I think you have an ice cream I scoop think there, I do. If, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, you do. So the recipe actually says you can put a little whipped cream or ice cream with this. Mm. But I think I'm going to use a little ice cream today. There we go. Well, you can't go wrong with Kate's ice cream. No. Broom's broom. Broom's broom. Like, it's the best. It is the best. Well, you know, that's one of the great things. Um, about living around here right now, all across the state, there are so many kind of artisan ice cream yep. makers and dairies. And um, if you go to the, um, the, the Department of Ag mm -hmm. website, 
and they actually have an ice cream trail. And so oh, you can get this map and it has the places and make ice cream mm -hmm. all over the state. And so you, the, your mission is to go to each one and get it stamped. I love it. So love how it. do you like that? I see I that like as that. a future show. Yes, we could do it, couldn't we? And then we can combine it with the breweries and the wineries. And there you I, go. I think that'd be good. <laughs> but in all seriousness, oh, gonna, oh, okay. go to the farmer's market, talk to the folks. They really are so knowledgeable about their products. They can help you because I know sometimes it can be a little intimidating if you're like me. I didn't grow up on a farm. Yeah. And, you know, pitting a peach, it's like, okay, what do I do? So I would eat it, but I wouldn't know how to cook with it. So talk to the folks. They're really helpful. Absolutely. That's the best thing about going to farmer's markets or local independent markets. Mm -hmm. You get to know the people and you can chat them up. And as we saw at a couple of places that we go, they can rattle off recipes like you can't believe because right. yeah. they know the product, they grow the product, mm -hmm. and they can give you better instructions than just about anyone. All right, well, All right. we're going to put this to the side. We'll eat okay. those in just a little, a little bit. bit, but we have to get something to go with it to wash it down, do we not? Oh, we definitely do. All right, here, let's push these things over. There mm -hmm. we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, it's just next up, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Drum roll, please. Da, 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 da. Okay. okay, here we go. Just put this here, get that up there. All right. Do we have all of our things coming in here? It's time for the Peach Patch Cocktail. Wow. Oh, that's all a good right. One. Remember, we were Ooh, talking. Nice glasses. We were talking about uh, Lion Distillery okay. there, mm -hmm. guys. Uh huh. And they were on the eastern shore in St. Mary's, was it? No. Uh, they're in St. Michael's. St. Michael's. Yeah, they're in St. Michael's. And um, a mm -hmm. uh, woman, uh, J Jamie Windon, mm -hmm. uh, she was the founder. Okay. And uh, it's actually Windon Distilleries. Nice. But their flagship product is this uh, rum product. Very nice. Okay. And this is. We've got white rum and darker rum. Yeah, we got white okay. rum. But well, we're we're gonna. I'm gonna give this to you to drink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, John. <laughs> and we're, nice. we're actually gonna work with the the white rum for okay. this particular peachy patch cocktail. Let me get my recipe here for it. Now, do we know the difference between white and, and dark rum? I do not. I'm just curious. Well. The um, the dark rum actually has molasses in it. Oh. It has um, kind of a brownish sugar. Okay. And so you're going to get all these kind of rich okay. tastes. Um, the other rum is smoother. It's just like a smoother kind of thing. Okay. So I have right here, we're going to... All right. Are you ready? I think we are ready. Ready to do this? Okay, here we go. Oh. This is very nice. This is <laughs> very, 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 nice. very, very, very nice. And again, mm -hmm. um, this we're doing a peach, you know, we're doing a peach show. Yes. And to start this, the way that I did it is I took this rum and I took fresh peaches oh. and I poured the rum into there nice. like so. Good. It does, doesn't it? It does look good, doesn't it? It does look good. Notice we all perk up at this one. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then you take, put the lid on it. And I put it, you don't have to refrigerate it. You just put it, I, you know, kept it out on the counter. And every day you just shake the whole thing. Just shake it okay. up real good and do that for a week. And then you have a peach infused rum. Wow. And so that's that's kind of what you need. We'll hand I'll that off it. there. Okay. So after that week, here you can see that we have mm -hmm. some of the official Yum. the official rum here. There we go. All right. So great. So we have that. We have our official rum. Now let me just grab this real quick so we can. We can put this together and finish this up real quick. I right love here. it. And there we go. Without about this part here. Actually... Took... I can smell it. The peaches yeah. and the rum are wafting over in my direction. And what's the, the uh, herb we have here? The uh... mint. Mint. Yeah, Just regular have... mint. Yeah, we have fresh mint. And mint grows like weeds in, in the Baltimore metropolitan area. It you does. can't kill it mint. Does. It All does. sorts of flavors. Mint. Yes. So I'm just going to take 
one. And you've got a filter. Two. Yep. And just filter okay. some of this out of here into our, our shaker. Right into our shaker. Nice. Fresh, right into the shaker. Wow. Now, obviously, you know, one of the other things that you can do is you can put this in and then, um, you know, you can strain the whole thing and just keep it from that point oh. on. So, you know, once once you've strained it, then you're you're pretty much good to go. Is this similar to when you muddle a drink? It's kind of like, well, nah, now this yeah, is muddling. You take a, muddling, you take you have a pesto to, or something yeah. and bang it. Okay. Yeah. So we get all, right. all of our get all of our delicious. It looks good. Get some of that rum right in there. Peachy rum mm -hmm. for our peachy patch cocktail. And if you do have distilleries in your local area, feel free to check them out because they have, you know, their own brands of rum or, or whatever you're Of oh, whiskeys, whiskeys and bourbons. And bourbons oh my God, there's your wineries, so, so much going on right now. It, I have to say in Maryland, it's, it's impossible not to drive by something, either a local farmer's market mm -hmm. or um, a stand of some sort, a brewery and yeah. really have a great time. So I know that's probably one of the questions people want to know about. They um, will. They and will. You can shop and and talk to your folks. They really the folks who make the, these types of alcohol and wine and beer. They love you generally love talking about it, or they have somebody in there, somebody in their store that will talk your ears off about the different ways that they make it. They so do, don't they? Explore, have fun with it. All right. So now we have about three ounces. It's about the same ratio okay. of the rum mm -hmm. to the lime juice. And then we're going to have some fresh mint. This came right from out behind the, uh, I love the restaurant. It. Love it, John. So we're going to put that in there. I always roll my limes before I do anything. And that's, I which is a really, why. no, it's a great, it, but great somebody thing told to me do. That years ago, my grandmama. Well, you, you explain the lime. I'm going to get some ice for us. And then we'll be, then we'll be ready to, to do a little toast in here. I, I would assume so. We'll be cutting the lime, slicing it. What are we doing with the lime, John? <laughs> I mean, you can cut it in half. And okay. I mean, we're just really, it's just a, just a squeeze. It's you know? a squeeze. Just a squeeze. Okay. There we go. One, two, three. Okay. All right. We're set. We're here. ready. Okay. So we have everything in. Yeah. This, 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 this. And do you have the, the, the final top into that, ladies and gentlemen. Our behind the scenes stuff. Final toppings. No, the ginger beer. The ginger beer. Okay. It's... All right. You're shaking. <laughs> you guys shake. Shake, shake, shake. You shake. Shake, shake, shake. shake, 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 shake gently. Shake, Poor John. Shake, His shake, kitchen shake, always shake. looks like <laughs> cooking in it. It's we really are using your kitchen, aren't we, John? We oh, are. This the is ginger real. Beer. This, this is real. This is really this is real. This is really real. All right. Sometimes too real, but it's real. All right. right, look at this. It's like Tom Cruise. I remember how he used Hot to do tail. that. Yeah, yeah I was tail. going to throw up behind my back. <laughs> All right, we got that there. Okay. Next thing, we're going to get our nifty dippy strainer here. What is that with that? We're going to go, beep. look at oh, that. Oh, it's so pretty. If you have those ice cubes that light up, that would be really cool. <laughs> Just saying, if you, floor, have, have, if them you have some of the fluorescent ones, they're really nice. Uh, and then just that would be top great that off with some ginger mm -hmm. beer. Like so. Boom. Let me just take a little thing here, stir that up a bit. All right, Mary. Yes, sir. Thank you. Wow. Absolutely. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers. So Cheers. this is a peachy life. This really is a peachy <laughs> life. And I'd also like to remind you that the rest of this week, if you're watching live, it's um, the end through this weekend of the Maryland Buy Local Challenge. And so you want to, you know, you want to get out there. The idea is buy everything you can local every day and try to do one or two things, one or two dishes every day for the rest of the week. And you can find that at buylocalchallenge.com. So anyway, shall we try this? Yes, we Absolutely. shall. Whoop. Oh. That's that nice. worth all the work. Okay. That is absolutely that is really worth, awesome. worth all the work for sure. For sure. <laughs> a little tartness, a little sweetness. Yeah. It does, yeah. it does. 
So, you know, just this whole idea, again, why we're here and why it's, you know, the farm and bay to table is to reiterate to all of you that the only way we can make our local economies healthy, make the bay healthy, is by purchasing local. Um, and, and that means, you know, farmers markets that go into farm stands to local independent markers, markets and local independent artisan food makers, bakers, um, people who are making kombucha, people who are making cheeses, people who are making all of those things. Because each time we do it, each time we take out that wallet and we spend the money there, it actually goes back into our local economy. And, you know, everything went big all over the country and all around the world, but we can keep our whole economy and help to rebuild it one bite and one cocktail sip like at a time I mean. and and one peach cake from Fenwick Bakery each time. Make the owner smile. Yeah, make that owner <laughs> and smile. And more than one peach cake, as many as you can till September or something. September. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. So before we get into getting trashed and- um, <laughs> John's and, quote, not mine. And, and, and taking our questions and answers, because we always like talking with all of you. Uh, just want to remind you that um, our next class is- August 22nd. August 22nd. And it's a pizza more. Yeah. We're going to do a loco boar pizza. Everything is coming from all around the Chesapeake Bay and the Maryland area. And we're going to show you the differences between big and little. It's August 12th, actually. It's oh, August, August 12th. 12th. <laughs> Excuse me, August 12th. I didn't August even take 12th. a sip. <laughs> so mark your calendars and we're going to learn how to make cheese. Yes. We're going to be making uh, some ricotta cheese and some mozzarella cheese, even some vegan ricotta. Yeah. So hmm. every kind of pizza you're going to want to make, and it's all local, and it'll be here on the 12th. So and registration's open now. So as soon as you finish with this, you can go and sign up for the pizza one. And we'll be having a grand time. And yes, we will be. Just having a grand time. So anyway, I think it's time for the Q&A. Um, we'll tell you anything you want to know. We're totally open. Well, I think somebody asked a question about the peaches. Uh, Do you have a preferred peach that you use in your peach cakes? A variety. A variety. Uh, I like freestone peaches, but the variety itself doesn't matter to me, only that they're freestone. Oh, and typically, okay. uh, the peaches are pretty similar in taste. Yeah. Okay. And what about uh, how many uh, staff actually make your peach cake at Fenwick? Uh, Work on them. Uh, there's about four of us who actually lay out okay. each cake. It's only like six of us in the back anyway. So yeah. pretty much everybody has a hand in it, literally a hand in it. <laughs> and John, do you offer peach cake at Gertrude's? Well, what we're doing right now is an upside down peach cake. So think about like an upside pineapple upside down cake. Oh. We do the same thing with peaches, peaches. And so the bottom caramelizes. And as we turn it over, um, it, it's very buttery. Mm. It's it's more like a cake cake. Okay. Um, That's a nice idea. I like yeah. That. Yeah. So, so we do that a lot and it's really popular. We do that with the, the vanilla ice cream as well. Mm, yeah. yeah. It's Kate's ice cream and peach cake upside down. Awesome. One more question. Fenwick Bakery, where are you located? 7219 Hartford Road, Baltimore, yes. Maryland, 21234. And you can call us at 410-444-6410. And do you have a website? We do, FenwickBakery.com. Okay. And they have a Facebook page too. Yes, we do. Yes, Very do. nice one. Yes. And there is a parking lot nearby too. Yeah. So you You're don't worry about Hartford Road parking. You're something uh, just okay. about every day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have a vegan option. Oh, How do you make a, a vegan? A virgin. A virgin. Oh, a virgin one. drink. Sorry, okay. vegan. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, like if you, to make this, um, to make this, you know, kind of like a uh, non-alcoholic drink. Mm -hmm. So what I would do, is um, you can get peach nectar. Uh, there's most stores will have this peach nectar. So I would nice. take that and then I would put the lime juice in with that and I would put the mint in with that, mm -hmm. muddle that all together, just like you know we kind of did here and mix it up. You can you know just put it in a blender or you could just mix, 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 strain it into a uh, glass like that with ice and ginger beer because ginger beer is non-alcoholic. And so you can have something that's very, very similar and you still get that peachy kind of flavor. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, that sounds very good. All righty, I think that was it for our questions. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, 
Oh, how do you know when peach is peaches ripe? Are ripe? Peaches are ripe. Peaches, oh. Well, they should have a little bit of gift to them. Uh, mostly when I get peaches and when you get them at the grocery store, they're still pretty hard and you just leave them sit. Uh, some people put them in a paper bag. Since I'm getting 25 pound crates, we don't have bags that we're putting them in. We just leave them in the crates over a couple of days, they'll soften up. Yeah. And uh, when they had some gift to them, that's when they're ripe enough for me to work with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Now, let me ask you something for cooking with peaches, like for your peach cake, you want them a certain consistency mm -hmm. for our enchiladas that maybe a different type of consistency. And then maybe if you're making peach jam or something, a different type of consistency, is, would that be valid to say? Yeah, I think you want them to at least have some body to them. You don't want them to be mush. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't like to be working with a peach that has gotten overly ripe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't quite work out Works the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, after they've gotten ripe, you've got about a day, maybe uh, two days in which you can really work with okay. it. If you like it much beyond that, it's, it's like trying to work with cotton. Oh my goodness. With cotton. <laughs> <laughs> So I wonder, let's see if there's any more questions. Any more questions? No. Okay, well then we would again like to um, to thank everyone that's helped put this together, uh, especially the Harford County Public Library, the whole staff and everyone there and um, with uh, the Maryland Department of Agriculture, the Maryland's Best Program and the Maryland's Best Seafood. Um, they've got everybody that works on the farm up at Black Rock Orchard and obviously um, Al and yeah. the whole yeah. staff at Fenwick Bakery. Uh, thanks Thank to you. everyone for making uh, this a really fun class. Uh, and and I think we learned some things as well. Yeah. well yeah, I love Hartford County Library, by the way. Oh. I have, I, yeah, I have a card there. But they've got so many different things going on. I get books online a lot of mm -hmm. times. And I remember you had a, a personal uh, Wi-Fi devices yep. for a while there. We still have know. them. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we do. Great. Well, cheers to everyone. Thank cheers you for to joining everybody. us. August 12th. August 12th. Pizza. We'll see you then. August okay. 12th. Take Bye. care. Bye. Bye.